This tutorial is divided into two parts. Part 1 is about the basic knowledge in Photoshop Elements. Part 2 is about the practice itself. Hello and welcome to my tutorial. I'm Martin W. Larouche. I can say choosing the best photo for this tutorial was kind of hard. I like these photos a lot. These are the best ones to me. But in the end this one was chosen to be used during the tutorial. There are four important terms that I would like to explain in this tutorial. First of all the contrast, the saturation, the details in the photo and the vignetting. Here's the original photo without any processing. The contrast is normal. Here I've increased the contrast. The dark areas are darker, giving more life to the photo. But here at the low contrast her face looks kind of flat, especially around her cheek. Another example. Here's an original black and white photo. The contrast is normal. No area were modified. But here the contrast was boosted. Unfortunately some details have been lost, shown here in yellow. Then in the optimized version, here in the red area, details were brought back. I've used a selection to do so. Here's a normal saturation. In fact, I'm talking about the intensity of the color. In this eye saturation version, the colors have been boosted. And in this low saturation version, the photo is almost colorless. Here's the original photo shooting. With a filter in Photoshop Elements, I have transformed this photo. So there are more details to be seen. In fact, details are extra lines or structure in a photo. In this reduced version, her hair are rather flat, showing little details. Look at the red area. Here's how to fabricate a vignette. First, you have an original photo. Then above it, you add a second layer. These gray and white squares mean that this new layer is empty. A vignette can be thrown in. Remember, the center is transparent or empty. If you merge those two layers down, you'll get this result. Ok, it's time to proceed. The first thing I'll do is to make a duplicate. Here's one of many techniques. So I take layer, duplicate layer. I give the name contrast and details. And I hit OK. It's time to change the blending mode on the new layer. I go down and I click on hard light. The next step is to invert the new layer. I take filter, adjustments and invert.
Before going any further, you should always check your photo's dimensions. So I take image, resize, image size. Around here, if you multiply those two numbers, you'll get 8 megapixels. Next step is to add a surface blur. I take filter, blur, and surface blur. On this slider you can add more or less radius. It all depends on how big is your photo. I go to the left and I come back to stop at some um, 60 pixels or so. To get exactly 60 pixels, I can type it inside a box. On the other slider, I type 65 levels and I hit OK. Here goes the filter. It may take a little while, but I'm sure you can wait for it. Now I have to merge the visible layers down, using an important shortcut. It will create a third layer on top. The layer in the middle is no longer necessary. So I click on it, here's the trash can, where I'll drag it on, it's gone. To get the high contrast I'll have to remove the colors on the top layer. I click on it, go to enhance. Adjust color and remove color. Then I have to change the blending mode to the overlay mode. Here's the high contrast effect. Consequently, you get more details and a little more saturation in the photo. Sometimes a few details in a photo shouldn't be visible. To do so, I have to create a mask. Here's the icon to do that. I click on it. By default, a mask is white and it must be selected. Remember to click on the white square here. Let's zoom in to see her face a little closer with the zoom tool. Here those two dark spots should be erased, so will be this area on the forehead. All I have to do is activate the brush tool, here. I make sure the foreground is black. I check the dimension, 100 should be ok. I also look at the brush setting. If I increase the hardness here, I'll get bad results. Putting it back to zero will give me a smooth brush. Ok, enough. I click here and there to erase the unwanted details or defects. At this stage, you can leave this photo as it is, or you can go on and add a vignette above it. To see my work, I click on the hand tool, here.
To add a vignette on a photo, you'll need to create another layer. So I take layer, new, and layer. I give the name vignetting. OK. Here's the new empty layer. To manually draw the vignette, I'll use a very large black brush. I take the brush tool. Around here I can increase the brush size. In my case, I'll need the maximum size. 2500 pixels. I make sure the hardness is at zero. OK, that's good. A little click here and here in the corner and here too. OK, that's enough. It's time to change the blending mode. Here. I'll take soft light. It's better this way. Mm, this vignette should be a little darker. All I have to do is make a duplicate of this layer. I take layer and duplicate layer. This name is OK. Whoa, it's too dark. All I have to do is reduce the opacity a bit. That's not bad here. Let's try something else. At 0% opacity, the second vignette disappears. OK, that's fine here. I click outside. To see the high contrast effect or not, I'll click on the eyeballs. Here. The vignette. Here. And here. Let's undo that. It looks great. In order to keep your work, you can save it in the PSD format. This format allows you to rework your photo afterwards, if necessary. The JPEG is a flattened version, but it can be easily shared on the internet. It is very light. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye.